All right, so here we go again. <clears throat> um, we're um, back uh, looking at plasticity and we're focusing on the uh, uh, perfectly plastic material. So I'm going back into the abacus model. In the previous class, uh, we saw how we had subjected the simple model to um, just 50.1 KSI and done the analysis. If you remember, uh, yep, uh, we had done uh, the analysis for the 50.1 KSI and watched that it couldn't find convergence and then we had subjected it to a strain of 1% and uh, we had seen uh, how the analysis had run through and it had calculated what was what it wants to show me is the mice stress which is just the square root of 3j2 um, we talked about how this can be understood as an effective stress and it's always equal to 50 ksi of course, the corresponding S22 is also 50 KSI. The corresponding S11 is negligible because we've only applied a unidirectional loading. If you remember the loading and boundary conditions. And um, we also got a chance to look at the strain which we had applied E22 was equal to 0 0.01. As you can see, let me make that a little bit bigger. Um, viewport annotation options. I'm going to make my legend a little bit bigger by specifying the size to be a little bit higher. This will allow me to see the letters a little more clearly. There you go. So you see how uh, you can change uh, the edits. You can even change the background. So for example, you can take the viewport annotation options and uh, uh, set the color to be just plain black. Or you can just make it to be just plain white. You say there, that's the legend color. Okay. Um, so now, today, what we want to do is look at that perfectly plastic material a little bit better. We gave it loading in only one direction and it gave us some results. Then we were able to look at the stress versus strain response. Um, for this particular model, in the last class, we looked at uh, storing the strain. Let me show you what I mean by that. Let's pull out PE22 and we'll pull out E22 and uh, we'll pull out S22. And since all the elements are the same, we're just gonna pull out any one element, save that data, and then go to Tools, XY Data, Create, Operate on XY Data, Combine, Let's combine the strain first with the stress and plot that expression. So that's the stress strain curve. And as I had mentioned to you last time, we had only saved 10 data points. And that's why um, it's showing us that slight kink in the curve because it's not storing the data point. So it skips from this point directly to this point. And the actual yield point is somewhere located here. So that's the plot of the strain versus the stress gives us the elastic perfectly plastic behavior and I can also do a plot of the plastic strain versus the stress and that of course looks like that once again as I had mentioned to you earlier since we're only saving 10 data points the, f the second data point is actually a point that has already undergone some yielding All right, so that makes sense. That data point is actually past yielding. The yielding begins at 50 ks, and that's the straight line. And you've got the plastic strain increments down. So this is good, but it doesn't really reveal to me the uh, plastic, uh, the prandtl royce relations or the behavior of a perfectly plastic material. So what we're going to do is we're going to load the model a little bit differently. What we're going to do first is we're going to make an additional analysis step. 
So in order to do that, I'll go, to, go back to the steps. I'll do the analysis in two steps now. And I'll create a second step. And it will be a new step after step one. It will be of the type static general. Nonlinear geometry is still off. And in the second step, I will subject biaxial loading after uniaxial yielding. And you'll see what that means. Okay. So now I'm still, of course, going to do this analysis in displacement control. Now, as you can recollect, um, or actually you can probably even see, to zoom out here so we can see it more clearly. <coughs> As you can see here, the first boundary condition corresponds to the restraint of U2 and UR3 right there at the bottom. In the initial step, we are restraining the boundary on this edge in the U1 direction and on this edge on the horizontal edge at the bottom in both U2 and UR3 direction. That's good. Then in the first step, we had previously applied by actual loading. We had said that this displacement is increasing to 1.8. I'm going to move this into the second step. So I click the button move right, and now this loading, which was uh, stretching in the longitudinal or vertical direction has been moved to the right hand side. I'll keep this uh, boundary condition number four, u1 equal to 1.2. I'm going to change that to 0 0.6, right, 0 0.6 inches, which means that the strain will be 0 0.005, which is of course above yielding. So in the first step, this plate will be stretched in the x direction to cause yielding. And in the second step, it will be stretched an additional 0 0.6 to a total of 1.2. So take a look at the analysis steps. In the first step, we are restraining the boundary along the uh, vertical edge and the horizontal edge. In the first step, <coughs> we are applying a U1 displacement of 0 0.6, which will produce a strain of 0 0.005. It is in the yield range, so it will yield in the x direction. <coughs> and then in the second step, we're going to apply vertical displacement of 1.8 inches. I'm sorry. This is the one that we need to be looking at. We're going to apply a vertical displacement of 1.8 inches and a horizontal displacement of 1.2 inches. So at the end of the day, the total displacement in the x and y direction will be the same. It will be 1.8 inches and 1.2 inches, but the path that it takes to get there will be different. The material is being forced to yield first in the x direction, and then it's being stretched in the x and y direction, so that the total strain at the end is 1% both in x direction and in y direction but the path it takes to get there is different from the previous step. And why are we doing this? You'll see shortly. So that's that, everything else stays the same. We'll create a new job. This will be uniaxial yielding followed by biaxial stretching leading to final strains of 0 0.01 in X and Y. Okay? Now, before I proceed any further, I realize that I should save enough increments. If I don't do that, and once again, it will show me the answer right at the end. So I'm going back to step now because when I had defined it, I forgot to make sure that it would give me at least 10 increments along the length. So I'm editing the incrementation so that I can have at least 10 data points between 
uh, during the step so I can see what's going on as far as the results are concerned. Of course, I can have more data points. I can have 100 data points if I wish, but right now I'm limiting myself to 10. Tell you what, in the second step, I'm going to ask for 100 data points, and we'll see a little bit later why I asked for 100 data points. Now we'll go ahead and submit the job and then monitor it. All right, the input processor has started. All right, it's completed the first step, taking 10 increments or storing the results for 10 increments. It may have taken more increments on the inside. And that's continuing with step two. It's up at increment number 80. And then it says, all right, I'm all done. I've taken, a, I've stored results for 100 increments and uh, the each increment is at 0.01 like you asked me to. And so it's all done. So it's time for us to post-process. <laughs>